How do you choose the donor age for your DMET graft tissue? Well, we are normally pretty permissive. We work with a great eye bank in the state of Alabama, and we want to be as accommodating to them as we possibly can be. So we like to use as much of their tissue as we can. We like to be good partners and friends with them. But there are some criteria that we absolutely insist on and some preferences that we have. The first is we never use donor tissue from a donor younger than 50 years old. And the reason we don't like using donor tissue from 30 or 40 year old donors is because number one, the tissue is much more tightly scrolled. It's much more difficult to unfold. And even when you successfully unroll those graphs and apply them to the back surface of the cornea, they tend to tightly scroll when they detach. So the detachments are more profound and they're more difficult to rebubble because you have these tightly curled edges as opposed to these loose flaps. So when you rebubble them, the tight scrolls get mashed up against the back of the cornea. They don't unfold and flatten. So you have these folds in the donor tissue after you rebubble them. So tissue younger than 50, we don't ever use, okay? Um, now, beyond that, we typically use tissue from a range of 50 to early 70s, okay? And we usually don't specify. We say any tissue within those age ranges is fine. But there are certain circumstances in which you might prefer younger or older tissue, okay? Now, most patients think they want a young donor, okay? And or people will ask you, can I have a young donor? How old was my donor? Well, for the reasons I just mentioned, you know, a young donor really doesn't confer any benefits. And actually, there was a good study that Garrett Mellis did that looked at graft detachment rates and found that older donors, 70-year-olds and older, had lower detachment rates than younger tissues. So I usually tell my patients, actually, the older tissues are better. But, but when do I care? When do I want younger versus older tissue? Well, I usually like younger tissue, somebody in their 50s, when I'm operating on an eye that has a shallow anterior chamber. And the classic example of that is a phacic eye, but also if you're working on an eye that has a bunch of anterior synechia, sometimes it is useful to have a tightly curled or more tightly curled tissue. The reason is when you have a shallow anterior chamber, Sometimes when you inject the graft, it's upside down and you want to flip it. But flipping the graft is hard when the graft is loose and floppy. If the graft is tightly curled, it's easier to tumble it over. And the fact that it's tightly curled is not a problem for unfolding because you get so much compression between the back of the cornea and the front of the iris or the IOL with a shallow interior chamber. It's easy to unfold those grafts. But flipping them is really hard if the graft is too loose. So I like a tight roll so I can flip the graft over. And the other reason I like a tight roll in a shallow anterior chamber is, you know, the way I prefer to check the orientation is by checking the Motsuro sign. And the Motsuro sign is easier to check when the graft curls better. And if it's not really wanting to curl, sometimes you don't know if the graft is right side up or upside down. So a tight roll is advantageous with a shallow chamber for those two reasons. On the other hand, it is often necessary to specify a loose roll, which is to say to use older donor tissue. And when I want a loose roll, I specify donor tissue from someone 70 years old or older. We used to ask for 65, but sometimes a 65-year-old roll can be surprisingly tight. But almost always, a 70-year-old donor graft is a loose roll. And a loose roll is indispensable when you're operating on an eye with a hyper-deep chamber. The classic example of an eye with a hyper-deep chamber is an eye that's had a vitrectomy, okay? But also, if you're working on a giant eye or an eye of an elderly patient that has vitreous cineresis, it's kind of like they have liquefied vitreous. It's almost like they've had a vitrectomy. But the number one case in which you have a hyper-deep chamber in which you want to use a loose roll is an eye that has previously had a PK and you're doing a DMEC for prior failed PK. And the key reason is one technique that you use for unfolding a graft with a deep chamber where you can't get good compression between the back of the cornea and the iris is you use a big graft.
And that big graft you can wedge in the angle, in the nasal and the temporal angle. And that gives you some, some compression and helps you open the graft. But if you've had a previous PK, you have to use a DMET graft smaller than the diameter of the PK. And most PKs are eight millimeters or so. So you end up using a DMET graft that's seven millimeters. And if you're doing DMEC in an eye using a seven millimeter graft and the chamber is hyper deep, that graft will just be tumbling and flipping and rolling around in the anterior chamber. And it is so difficult to open it up if it's tightly scrolled. So in eyes with a deep chamber, you really want to use a loose roll that wants to open because it's tough to get good compression, especially if you have to use a small graft, i.e. you have an eye with a previous PK. So those are the key considerations, is in eyes with hyper deep chambers, especially if you have a prior PK, you want to specify older tissue, 70 years old or older. You never use tissue from somebody younger than 50, or my opinion, but you might actually want 50s or 60 year old tissue preferentially if the chamber is super shallow or if you have anterior synechia.